We're in the city with a couple friends, Harshit and David. Say what's up, guys. What's hey, up, what's going guys? on? Kind of a funny story. I was uh, helping a friend, Harshit, here, and he got a call from his other friend, David, down here in the city, and he got this car, and San Francisco is full of hills right now, so it's got a stick shift. And I always like to have you tell the story, but what happened with the car exactly? What's, go <laughs> what's going on? Okay, well, essentially, uh, about a week ago, I swapped out my automatic for a manual. And then the next day I decided, you know, I'm just gonna like jump straight into the fire and I just drove to work, which is probably about an hour drive that requires freeway stuff. So I was overzealous and I thought, you know, I can do anything. Um, I'm just gonna go for it. And I attempted to just go for it. And then you flew too close to the sun. Then I flew clo too close to the sun and I got burned. And you got <laughs> stuck on a hill in San Francisco. Yeah. After which you called me to take, get an Uber down to you. Yeah. yeah. So I want to hear this amazing story about Harshit. Uh, I was talking to you on, about, you were telling me about getting out of your comfort zone. Oh, yeah. We yeah. had this amazing conversation about, I was bringing up Z's, about how Z's is a huge inspiration to me in building confidence and being free. And you had an amazing story about that. I just want to tell you, like, what happened to you and how did you, how did you develop that? Um, so like uh, with me and like I think David shares a lot of the same experiences as well. That's how we became friends. It was that um, so at one point in my life I, I was going through like severe social anxiety and uh, this was up to the point where I, I remember this one story where my mom she basically asked me to get something from my neighbors and uh, so I actually hid inside the house because I didn't have the nerve to go up to the neighbors and get something from them. And I was, I, I like, I was, uh, so I was in my room thinking to myself, like, this shit has to change. <laughs> like, you can't really go on like this. So I started Googling on how to get out of your comfort zone, how to, like, beat social anxiety. And I came across this thing called comfort zone challenges. Comfort zone challenges. Yeah. Okay. And, and how does uh, it work? What they, what they basically uh, make you do is, like, for an extended, like, run of days, maybe 30 days, what you do is you make yourself uncomfortable every single day in various like you do various challenges like doing uh, 20 push-ups on the on a really crowded street in the middle of the day without any warning or start giving high fives to people on the street so like, 20 push-ups on the street in the middle of a busy street intersection or then just high-fiving people like saying what's up high-five yeah, ra random strangers random strangers or like even just going up to random strangers and uh you know start um, start a conversation and so you go up and you're just like totally scared at, at going up to him or did you just uh, pumped up with adrenaline well, I mean what is it like it, it in the beginning it was like completely mortifying like the idea of just going up and talking to someone and uh, after a while what happens is you start to enjoy it you start to uh, realize that you have so many skills that you can take you uh, like develop through like it's basically putting yourself in such a random high pressure situation and seeing how your psyche, how your mind, how your body reacts to it. And uh, once you continue, keep, continually keep doing this, you start to realize new, new uh, features about yourself in your personality. And after a while, it just becomes a hobby. And uh, yeah, I love it now. So now it's a hobby. Now, did you do it by yourself or was it with a, with a peer group? Um, in the beginning, it was just me. But like, there's actually a com like communities online for this. So that's how I met David. Oh, wow. Oh, guys. Yeah. yeah. Is it a is it a forum or a, like a blog? Uh, is it a forum or like a Reddit or what is it? Um, I think like if you just Google comfort zone challenges. Com okay, Google comfort zone challenges yeah. for anybody who's interested in, in checking them out. That because I mean that's a, that's a huge help right there. I'm really glad you told that story. It's something that uh, I think it's amazing and it's a lot of, actually along the same line. I was just talked about Z's earlier today. I mean it's exactly what he did. He would go out in the middle of the streets, do push ups. Like just go out do push-ups, just yeah. did not even care, just inspiring people to be free and like completely being themselves. So yeah. another thing, another thing is uh, rejection therapy. How's that which work? Is really good. It's basically you just get rejected every single day, like doing stuff. Like um, a, a low-key example is you go into a shop and you try to convince them to sell you something for free, and you it's just outrageous. So you know you're gonna get rejected, but the aim is to have fun with it. And let, once you have, start having fun with rejection, your mindset changes towards rejection. And you start to like it? or you, you, no, no, you start to <laughs> view it as an opportunity to it's learn. An, okay, opportunity to learn, to develop yourself yeah. into a better version. Exactly. Wow, exactly. that's an amazing therapy, rejection therapy. Wow, what do you, what do you think, David? What, 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 what's, how has that helped you? Well, I'm thinking, well, it's helped me in a lot of the same ways. I mean, I, I feel like I wouldn't be able to articulate too much that he hasn't already, but one of the, the common examples that people are probably thinking about is approaching girls and oh, women. Yeah. 
And so uh, I underwent a similar type of rejection therapy, as, as he would put it, and I went on a 30-day challenge myself and tried to, you know, approach one random girl a day for at least 30 days. Mm -hmm. And um, that got me kind of in the mentality of just going to achieve my goals as opposed to just sitting around and waiting, essentially waiting for them to happen, thinking, you know, oh, it's meant to be, I'm destined to, you know, find something and just kind of like scheming. Like within these 30 days, I a lot of life-changing things happened. I met a lot of great people. And most importantly, it was ingrained to me the thought of going for what you want. Basically taking action rather than, you know, get stuck in that uh, phase of mental masturbation where you're just taking in information and doing nothing Do about nothing it. about it. Now, now, can I ask you if this, is this, a, ha, do you guys know who Tyler Durden is? Oh boy. Okay, uh, so that's the, a whole other conversation. All right, yeah, good. Yeah, so that's, yeah. That sounds a lot like, like the same line. So anyone who doesn't know on the video, you should definitely check out Tyler Durden. If you're interested in the idea of talking with girls. So, but to, but to kind of uh, tie this thing and bring it around full circle, when you go for things, or sometimes in life you just gotta go for things, and sometimes you just fall flat on your ass, kind of like what just happened <laughs> with my car. Um, I don't know if you want to show them the hill. Yeah, look at this hill. This hill does incredible hill right here, right? So we got yeah. No, like I thought, I was just like, you know what? This hill, I can probably take this hill. I could probably do it. Um, but I. You know, That's I ended up hill. whipping out. Well, it looks, you got a friend. You got a friend here that you can count on. You called him and he came you too. Got a Just friend like that. In me. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. You know, I, I gave him credit for that. I was like, "Yeah, you're a friend. You can take care of guys. Not, you know." And now you got the courage to actually put this on camera, put it on the internet. That's yeah, the that's funny true. Part. As I thought, I was asking the harsh, and I was like, yeah, I wonder if you would mind putting a, doing a vlog on this or like kind of making a fun situation yeah. of it. And I, that's the magic of it. You have enough confidence to put it out there to say, this is me. This is okay. I, this is a funny thing that happened. Yeah, yeah, exactly. it's, it's cool. Well, it's like, I mean, yeah, it's really about all how you reframe it in your mind because this could be just like, a, oh, this is really embarrassing. I never want to talk about this ever again. Or it could be a great conversation starter later, and it could really just add character to you and your life and just make exactly. it fun. So it's about all how you think about it. It's all about how you think about it. Now it's going to be on a vlog, and we'll get it out there, and, and, and hopefully people can learn from it. So thank, if you did, thank you for, for sharing. I'll post these guys, uh, what, you have like in, Instagrams or, or links that you guys, anyone yeah, else we'll, to find we'll, you guys? Uh, yeah, we'll let you know. Okay, we'll put yeah. a link if they want to put, contact these guys on, on their links or have videos or whatever to, go, to link to. And so appreciate you watching. Yeah, thanks. And uh, next time when you see me on the streets, hopefully I'll go from a bad Asian driver to a Tokyo Drift Asian driver. Yeah. So uh, hopefully, coming yes. soon to a <laughs> coming soon to <laughs> a, a mountain pass. To, yeah, <laughs> to a hill near you. Awesome. Right. Thank you guys. Experience. So that's all I got today. Just thought I'd give you. A, I haven't done a video like this in a minute, but looking pretty lean and shredded. Um, probably about eight percent body fat. I'm thinking. I don't know. But very healthy and comfortable, thanks to Gregor Gallagher for a lot of the information he provided me and following, and uh, Kino Body, uh, Inspiration Z's. And it's a great philosopher once said that freedom is just another word for nothing left to lose. And it's so windy on some of these corners, man, I just feel like I'm going to fall over, I can't even get a shot. But each day, I feel like that, that statement that that great philosopher once made back here, probably in San Francisco one time, Janis Joplin, I feel like each day we're getting a little bit closer, we're getting a little bit closer to realizing it, where, you know, it's like material possessions are great and, and having things is good and all that. I feel like each day though, I feel like I'm getting a little bit closer to being completely free and walking outside and just being completely happy in the moment, letting go and, and realizing that all we have is now, all we have is now we, we, and the only goal each day that I really have and that anyone should really have is to feel good right now because all we have is right now and so we when we're feeling good our thinking is right our attitude is right and when our attitude is right the facts don't count so every day just just aging a little bit closer to being completely free and letting go of all material possessions not 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 to sell them and not have anything but just to have no attachment to them to have no connection to material things just completely being in harmony at one with the true essence of, of who we really are and, and identifying with the source and with nature you know and with mother nature so because freedom is just another word for nothing left to lose <sighs> great day one of the wealthiest people i meet down here 
are, some of them are in just incredibly fine-tuned machines. Kind of like the guy Smith and Matrix. I just saw one, you know, tall guy right now look just like that. Just shredded, strong, six foot tall, and just super high quality, classy, wealthy, you know, prosperous gentleman. You know, like probably about in his mid 40s. And I meet a lot of people like that down here. They know something, they're on something, they're doing something. But I believe that that being, having incredible, phenomenal health like that is the number one sign of opulence. Having incredible mastery over your health and over your stomach is the number one sign of opulence. Now, that's a lot different than it was maybe like say 200 years ago when being plump was the sign of opulence. Now it's just the opposite because it's so rare, it's so rare. Going by the gym, like the top rated gym and fitness place in San Francisco in the Bay Area and none of the people were shredded. Now granted they're in good shape, I mean they know what they're doing, they probably know a lot more than I do, okay? But they're not shredded. And I want to be shredded, man, I don't care. Screw all the rest, man. I mean, it's all good and all, but dude, I want to be aesthetic, man. I'm doing it. I do this for aesthetic, man. I don't mind being bold about it anymore. I don't care. Aesthetic is the way to go. So that's kind of the motivation, along with the health, the durability, and the way that you feel, right? I used to be shy about it and say, oh, I don't want to tell anyone it's, that I want to look for good for aesthetics. Like that's just kind of like I thought it was like just I was just shy. I didn't want to be bold, so I want to just give it up to my to my man Z's for inspiring me as well as Jeff's side too but definitely Z's for inspiring me just to be, be bold and be confident and proud of what I want and who I am you know just not hold back like that's just just being bold about it that's who I am that's who I want and I think that a lot of people want the same thing they want to freaking look aesthetics man that's aesthetics not a bodybuilder dude just the right aesthetics and I think it's that having the perfect aesthetics in the way of the human body is like the ultimate sign of opulence. I think one of the reasons people love Z's so much is because he represented a spirit of complete freedom, of complete letting go and being who you really are, who he really was. And not only did he have incredible confidence and probably the best aesthetic physique of all time that I've ever seen, but he just represented that spirit of complete and utter freedom of being who he really was and not caring about what small-minded people, petty, petty people think. And that type of spirit doesn't just happen overnight. You know, a guy like that was, was, a, was a video game guy and he wasn't, was just a kid, he was just a skinny nerd. But over time he developed the confidence of saying, you know what, this is who I am. And this is what I want the, want the world to see me as. And he just kept putting out content, more and more and more content all the time. And he's with his friends just being himself letting go and it wasn't perfect it was just totally raw i think that's what people liked about about him so much is that he's just completely raw and uncut and he was just being himself and then and there's a lot there's a lot to this z's epitome, epitome was an alter ego okay and i want to talk a little bit about having like an alter ego or another self someone that almost like a, a split personality someone that you can almost call on and 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 someone you can almost call on inside of thyself to like bring him out and be like, this is, this is the guy who just doesn't care. He has the confidence to do anything. This guy has the confidence to, to talk to anybody. This guy has the ability to become the success in, in business and the success in fitness and have the shredded body that he always wanted. You know, that's this guy. It's like, like the, the guy inside of you. And, and I think that's what the Z spirit represented is, is he left a legacy for everyone to kind of pull that spirit out of themselves. And the spirit of just being completely free and no longer caring about what the small-minded people think. And it does take an alter ego. And I've developed that over time. And it's like something that, that I developed over time and then I forgot about it and lost it. But it's there inside of myself and it's inside of each one of us. It's almost like calling, defining it as a separate name, almost like another person. And when that, when you, that spirit is called out that other alter ego you know that that other self is called out you know you become more than than a small-minded person sees you who cares what a small-minded person thinks it's like you become so much greater and so much more powerful it's it just becoming that ego and, and at times you gotta kind of it's like i gotta pump it up i gotta give it a lot of a it's like self-talk and encouragement at times 
Well, not even at times, all the time. Every single morning I do. And when I see, so it's like every single day I have to do. It's constantly on my, on my mind of giving, giving myself that encouragement. And then when, when I feel like giving myself like a, a real talking to, almost like, almost like a, like a encouragement talk almost. That's when I feel like the other self, that strong Z's type spirit, fearless, the fearless spirit is revealed and, and then greatness that is and is to come uh, begins to transform and, and we all have this and so and, and you do as well it just takes time to nourish it and develop it so this channel is going to add so much value to your life you have no idea it's developing so much right now it's going to be I, I, I see where it's going and the vision with it and it's just going to help so many people become the greatest version of themselves and it's filling a big void as to what is online right now and what is truly needed so leave a comment below with what you think is needed and what you think you know what your thoughts are what your questions are about z's about the alter ego man what, do you believe that, that, that you have an alter ego like another self inside of you that doesn't care that it lives completely fearless leave a comment below like the video subscribe thank you number one voted base gym in yelp and sf bay and they got a list of trainers here a bunch of people here doing really well and compliments to them they're all staying fit and healthy I'm congratulating them I think it's great gotta go to school to get shredded these days though and you know what I mean I'm not too too big in sport here but nobody's shredded at least not in these pictures nobody looks shredded they all went to school they got degrees about exercise science BS kinesiology nutritional science kinesiology kinesiology nursing They're amazed and they probably know a lot about nutrition and training and probably know a lot more than I do because I'm just nobody. But I'm fucking shredded, man. Why? What's the difference? What the heck is the difference? I I mean, what do we know that they don't know, man? There's something. There's something. There's something.